To find the limit of the square root of 2 plus x minus root 2 over x as x approaches 0, we'll need to use what's called the conjugate. Certainly, we can't just plug 0 in because we would get 0 divided by 0, so we will have to do some work here. The conjugate of the square root of 2 plus x minus 2 is found by just switching the sign in the middle, so the square root of 2 plus x plus the square root of 2. And what we're going to do is multiply the numerator and denominator by this conjugate. Of course, since we multiply the numerator and denominator by the same thing, we're not changing the value of the expression. We're just multiplying by 1. The reason we're doing this is that multiplying by the conjugate produces a difference of squares. So this is useful when you have a sum or difference of terms, and you'd rather have difference of their squares. Certainly, looking at the numerator, I would rather have the difference of the squares, because if we have the difference of the squares of these two things, the twos will actually cancel out, because the square roots would be gone. Let's go through the algebra and see how this plays out. Distributing in the numerator, we have the square root of 2 plus x times the square root of 2 plus x, which is just 2 plus x. Then we have the square root of 2 plus x times the square root of 2, seen there. Then negative square root of 2 times the square root of 2 plus x. And then the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, with that negative. The square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 2, so we have minus 2. You can see that the middle terms are going to cancel out, which is why we're going to end up just having the difference of 2 plus x and 2. And also, there's no need to distribute in the denominator. We'll just leave that how it is. So canceling out those middle terms, we're left with 2 plus x minus 2 in the numerator. The denominator's unchanged, and now we can cancel out those 2's, just like we said before. 2 minus 2, look at that. When we cancel those out, that just leaves x in the numerator, which we can cancel out with that x in the denominator. So now we just have 1 in the numerator, and the factor of x in the denominator is gone. Finally, at this point, we've eliminated the discontinuity, and so we can plug 0 in for x. That's going to give us 1 over the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2. And of course, that's just 1 over 2 square root of 2. So that is the value of the limit found by just multiplying by the conjugate. And there's nothing special about 2 here. We would solve it the same way, no matter what number was there under the square root. And again, we use the conjugate to produce the difference of squares, because that eliminates those messy square roots. Here's another example, exactly the same, but with 3, that you can try on your own. I'll show you the steps now. This limit follows the exact same way as the previous one. Multiply by the conjugate. Distribute, cancel out those middle terms, 3 minus 3 cancels out, x and x cancel out, then it's just 1 over some stuff, plug in x equals 0, and we get 1 over 2 root 3. And if you're into rationalizing the denominator, we could finish writing this as the square root of 3 divided by 6 by just multiplying the top and bottom by root 3. And coming up to the previous problem, if you want to rationalize the denominator, multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 2, and you're going to have the square root of 2 divided by 4. So that's how to evaluate some simple limits that require multiplying by the conjugate. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Calculus 1 course and Calculus 1 exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching.